And we're back with our bros, Liam and Seth, from the Bro IDS Project. Of course, Bro is an open source network traffic analyzer, originally developed by Vern Paxson, who continues to lead the project, now jointly with a core team of researchers and developers at the International Computer Science Institute in Berkeley, California, and the National Center for Supercomputing Applications in Urbana-Champaign, Illinois. Liam Randall and Seth Hall, excuse me, are on to give us additional insight into how the Bro IDS is used. Before I bring them on, though, they sent us gifts. So I want to read the love note that came with <laughs> the gifts. Your love note will be in the mail after the show. He says, Paul, Larry, Jack, John, Carlos, uh, Mike, and Mick, plus, plus. And the plus, plus is written in, in ink, but the rest is printed out, which I thought was hilarious. From our team to yours, thanks for all that you guys do. Honored to be on the show, Liam, Seth, Robin, and Vern. Then it says, P.S., be careful you do not accidentally DOS, and the DOS yourself has a, a, a footnote. Uh, do not DOS yourself. This stuff is potent, and DOS is denial of sobriety. And attached yeah, buddy. <laughs> attached with, if you cut to my camera, Steve, atta uh, along with <clears throat> was an entire case of cherry-infused vodka. Is that what you is that what you would call this? Cherry-infused vodka. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> cherry-infused vodka. Vodka-infused cherries, cherry-infused vodka. So we're supposed to eat the cherries? Is that what's supposed to happen? <laughs> we, uh, oh, yeah, it's all we, edible. I picked these cherries it's myself. It's been a long Trevor time for that. Chicken. You picked them with your toes? What? I picked them myself. You picked them yourself. Are you serious? Really? Do you guys? Yeah. No, I bought them at a store, <laughs> actually. I picked them at the store. Um, I, I sampled some. I tried to get my wife drunk. It didn't work out. She she declined to get drunk with me, but it's uh, it smells really. So, what kind of vodka did you use? Uh, one dollar more than the least expensive. <sighs> it's a good vintage. Uh, yeah, nine dollar for the Traveler one seven five. So you just drink it right out of the thing, right? Like this is a glass. Is that you can do? You can do it however you want. You can drink it. You can mix it. You can put it on ice. It's good on ice cream. You ice can take cream, the huh? cherries and dip them in chocolate. They're delicious possibilities are endless it's highly configurable kind of like the bro ids it is quite like bro <laughs> although bro ids doesn't get me drunk usually you may just not be using it right yeah maybe this is true <laughs> oh so i have more introductions for you guys uh, seth hall is an engineering lead developer for bro his twitter handle handle is at reamer that's r-e-m-o-r -R. is that how you say it reamer or remer uh Remer. I like Reamer better because it sounds dirty. But <laughs> Seth is a, an experienced incident responder. He has previously worked with uh, worked at Ohio State University, GE, and other high-profile locations. Liam Randall, Hectoma, Hectom, Hectoman? Hectoman. Hectoman on Twitter, is a longtime security consultant, trainer, and open-source contributor. Our bro evangelist, dude, that is the friggin' coolest title ever. I have product evangelist. Could we say like Ness Evangelist or something? It doesn't sound as cool as bro evangelist. I Not think at that's all. awesome. Uh, his talks and training sessions have helped others understand the power and flexibility of the bro platform. Professionally, he's brought to the bro platform to dozens of vertical industry markets and is leading up the product development side for bro. I'll let you guys. Take it away now. Welcome to the show again. Thank you very much for the cherry uh, infused yes, vodka. Thank you. It's very tasty. Now, do I have to refrigerate this after I put the cap back on it? No, you're good. Now you can just put it wherever. I can. Put it's fine. <laughs> yeah. One man, one the jar. Is that what you're implying? The okay. Put the it only moving liquid in there is vodka. <laughs> <so> <laughs> I gotcha. There's, there's no, there's nothing else, you know, to water it down. So it's like, you know, the vodka on your shelf. But it tastes like juice. Yeah, it tastes like candy. Yeah, that's dangerous. That is. I'm going to be yeah. really animated for my next podcast. Everyone should tune in for Stogie Geeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> normally I head home, but I may have to stay around and watch yeah. this train wreck. I mean, a uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, tell us about the history of Bro and provide us with your demonstration. From this point forward till the end, I'm going to sit back and get drunk while you guys do the work. 
Does that sound good? So, uh, you know, we're on today to talk about uh, the Bro platform, which is um, was previously known as Bro IDS. You know, one of the big things that we started pushing in the last year is is that Bro is way more than just an IDS. Uh, it's, it's really uh, a whole platform. Uh, of all things, Bro is a programming language first. And we've had a lot of high-profile installs and locations over the last few years. Um, it's been installed um, all over the DOE, a lot of higher ed. People that have big security problems have, have turned to Bro traditionally for a lot of reasons. One, it's incredibly scalable. Our first 10 gig deployment was in 2007. Uh, and uh, now we've got it running um, at uh, close to 40 gigabits per second at some sites. Um, and we have sites that are regularly doing a sustained you know, 14 or 15 gigabits per second through uh, Bro. So the big thing that's been the uptick this year was going around and showing people that it's really easy just to take a little bit of glue and plug Bro into and plug your network into all of these outside data sources. So one of the things that's very popular is our um, automatic lookups to the Team Comrie Mauer hash registry. So as Bro is uh, you know, reading all the traffic off the wire, it's um, uh, understanding all the protocols it has an analyzer for, it's extracting files, it can generate file hashes right on the fly, uh, and then start to do all these lookups. And I, I can actually interject a little bit and say, um, so Bro has actually been developed now. It's first line of code. I think we've finally determined that the first line of code Vern wrote was in 1995. So Bro is, what, 18 years old this year. And um, one of the big, one of, <laughs> exactly. One of the big uh, one of the big changes that actually happened was this this grant that we're currently still operating under that we got from the National Science Foundation uh, for three million dollars and that's actually the grant that I'm primarily paid out of because I'm actually one of the um, one of the employees at, at ICSI, the International Computer Science Institute, and it actually gave us the chance to sort of sit back and say, well, we need to actually make this more usable. Um, there's been actually surprisingly few changes in the core other than sort of fixing bugs and things like that. The biggest, the biggest real effect that everyone saw and everyone's really been adopting Bro for this reason is because the usability of it sort of changed. Where Bro, it, the first time I ran it in 2005, it took me months and months and months to really get anything. <laughs> Sorry. Those cherries are really strong. <laughs> Did you just eat a whole jar? No. <laughs> Just one cherry. <laughs> he, he swallowed a cherry. Woo! All right. Sorry. <laughs> Woo so one of the big changes, though, was that the, this sort of usability uh, perspective and, and really focusing on the usability of Bro heavily and making um, adding capabilities that are really user focused, which was a big difference because that that kind of stuff. You, you don't really have that desire and that pressure come up in research typically because it's typically you do something just enough to get the paper done and get it so that you can say it was correct, not so that it's something that can be put into production and used operationally. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of a downside of, of research, but it's life. And now we've had the chance to kind of step back and refocus on making it usable. And so we, you know, we took that opportunity. It, there have been, um, you know, that whole academic background, though, really attracted a particular crowd to Bro, and um, Bro is very, very large in the in the uh, DOE and uh, uh, universities, as, as I mentioned before, and, and other places. But uh, because of that, we've always had this really smart user base, so we've had a lot of uh, really amazing um, high-profile takedowns of uh, teams. Uh, one of the things that we just got permission to talk about was the um, tracking of the Karna botnet which was uh, released as the great internet scan of 2012. Um, one of our real power user, so, users... So, I'm, I'm sorry, Liam, before you get there, um, um, yeah. so back up. <clears throat> Way back in the day, we all, a lot of us used Snort, right? And then, so like, Bro, when I was doing IDS work, Bro was this kind of new thing. So when you say that Bro's a platform, can you kind of just expand upon that and some of the differences or maybe similarities? Yeah. Well, here, I'll, I'll hit on that. Go ahead, Seth. Go ahead, Seth. The, the, the reason that, that we've really been trying to sort of position Bro as a platform and, and stuff is because it's a programming language. Mm. I, I mean, it's really, at its core, it's nothing else other than a programming language that happens to be very oriented and sort of batteries included for doing this kind of, this kind of work. And now that we've been doing some other work, like uh, in the last, 
I, I want to say last few years, but it's been in, it's been worked on since about 2007, is Bro Control, which is actually this utility for helping you run these really large clusters of load balanced sniffing hosts. So <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> Sorry, we're trying to get we're gonna get Steve to eat a cherry. Steve, Steve eat the cherry. Eat, 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 eat the cherry. <laughs> Here's, Everyone's open. sleeping on my couch tonight. Thanks to you, Liam. Thank you very much for that. It's, <laughs> it's my pleasure. Hey, I, I if there's one thing I can do with Dawson. I got a loader <laughs> car from the dealership. I can puke in the. I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's created, uh, he created so a lot guys... of romance here tonight on the Paul.com show. <laughs> I love you, man. Very good. What's that? Yeah, uh, so, uh, <laughs> Seth and Liam. <laughs> there it is. Along those lines, <laughs> there, uh, there are a lot of people that say, well, I don't want to learn another programming language. I love – give me a controversial language to love. Cobol. Love Cobol. <laughs> Perl. <laughs> Ruby. D Python. Whatever it is, why should I go learn Pro? Well, I'm, it's a domain-specific language, so it was really designed for working on networks. Mm. So the, the kind of things that we do, like having the protocol analyzers built in, let you dissect your, your network traffic in ways that other tools don't even give you access to. When you think about traditional IDS, you're using you know half a dozen tools. You know, you're doing full packet capture. You've got you know Wireshark or something to give you you know some metadata about the protocols to understand it. Bro gives you all of that and a programming language to tie it all together, all as one. Um, the language itself is actually very easy. It's it's almost Python esque. Go ahead, Seth. And and really to continue that thought, I mean, that's how it's a language. But then how it really becomes a platform is that. I can write a script which then anybody can run, and that's really many of the scripts. For instance, like the one Liam mentioned earlier that um, that does file hash checks against Team Cymru's malware hash registry, that was one that I had been running operationally in I think 2007. Actually, I in in particular I recall that one. I started. Um, I, I used to work at the Ohio State University doing incident response, and. Team Cymru announced the malware hash registry. We started running in 23 hours with no pre-notification. 23 hours after they announced it, we were running detections based on that at OSU. And yeah, so that was so, where uh, it kind of became a platform because it's not just that everyone's sort of on their own to write their own scripts. It's more that you put this platform sitting across your network looking at your traffic and suddenly any script that I write may be applicable for you or for other people. And, and hopefully and, we're going to actually start addressing Seth, that. So our listeners know, Ohio State, that's like a small network, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the network there at the time. Put that in perspective. I mean, because I, I used to work in education and, and have had the benefit of talking with people who used to work there, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. still do work there. I'm not sure. But put it in perspective for listeners, right, they may not know. Um, Ohio State University's network at the time when I was there was hovered because we actually monitored for, monitored this with Bro. Hovered daily from about four, 40,000 active IP addresses to 100,000 active IP addresses, and had somewhere around 70 to 100, 70 to 80,000 active users at any given time. Wow. You know, but in, in um, these universities, you you've also basically have three separate businesses. You know, you basically run this, you know, uh, ISP for your students where you don't have a ton of control of the end user devices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You uh, have your core, your back end, like where all of your administrator stuff is. And then you're still going to have all your public stuff, your services that you're providing. You know, so you, you have these three gigantic important things that you need to protect. And that's, you know, Bro was designed for these kind of giant environments mm -hmm. uh, from the get-go. It's why it sort of ships policy neutral. A lot of the things Bro yeah. tells you about mm -hmm. stuff, and you as the analyst need to give context to understand your network. So, Liam, can you just say Python-esque for me again? Because I, I thought that was, was kind of Python-esque. That was kind of sexy. Try to that's say sexy. that after you finish that first jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give you odds on that, buddy. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I'll, you'll, you, know you I mean? won't see my video. All you'll have to put the video at the floor if I finish that jar. <laughs> I think you're going to be slurring your words by the time we get to the uh, the next podcast. <laughs> if you keep it up, but hey, I, I love it. I think it's awesome. This is the stuff I haul out to all the conferences. I have 32 gallons to bring around with me to all the conferences. So, is you the one that brought it to DerbyCon and it got Larry to fall in love with it? Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, Shmoo oh, wait, and uh, wait, wait, a that's a contributing factor to the night that shall never be mentioned again, uh, wasn't it? I don't want to talk about that <laughs> night. <laughs> it's oh very cloudy. God. It was by uh, opening this jar, you accept the terms of service. If it hadn't there's been for that bottle of bullet, first, <laughs> 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 we drank a bottle of bullet. 
for then an appetizer. Can, yeah, for right. an appetizer. <laughs> I don't think we awesome had cannibal. Uh, anyway. <laughs> You know, I mean, so, but, so the, the question about why do I need Brawl on my network? You know, when you look at all of the, the neat tools that people are putting out, you know, like for, you know, DNS uh, uh, work or DGAs, you know, DGA detectors. And there's all of these researchers that are doing this wonderful work. And the big problem is, is that there's a major gap between uh, research and uh, not even like traditional academic research, but like security research and deployment. And what Bro does is by giving you this, this scalable, flexible platform, once you have Bro installed, then if uh, you know someone over uh, you know in, at a security conference releases a new DGA detector or a a new script or a new piece of glue that will tie Bro into some outside Intel database source, you can just take that and spin that up on your Bro platform. Bro IDS out of out of the box is a really compelling reason to install the Bro platform, mm -hmm. but it's not the only reason. And I think the thing that I'm most excited about are all these little pieces of glue that are popping up on uh, GitHub and places like that. Uh, this, uh, you know, sort of organic code sharing. Well, and uh, I guess I should say, since you've mentioned domain generation algorithms, I do have in my GitHub repository a, uh, a domain generation algorithm script for detecting G01 pack, or at least one implementation of it, or two implementations, something like that. Yeah, and, and those are things that you just can't address with a traditional signature. Um, and, and so when you look at the challenges that we face today with network you know, responders, you have open, I, open IOC, which is a great way to exchange information, but there isn't a way to deploy logic in a flexible way. And that's really the big thing that Bro brings to the table. And, and frankly, it couldn't be easier to deploy. I mean, you've got the quick start guide right on our website, um, you know, our pre-prepared packages, you can clone our whole repo, and it's included by default in uh, Doug Burke's amazing security onion. So you, you have a bunch of different ways to spin this up very quickly on your network. So tell us about the Karna botnet. Seth, do you want to start? Well, um, it actually started. So I'm, I'm also a 5% employee at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, 5% of the, my time, so not a whole lot. But um, way, way back uh, when, it, when it very first started, uh, Ashish Sharma, one of the responders there, he started Brilliant. sending emails. He started talking and asking questions internally on their list, and he actually started asking some other um, private communities too about some stuff they were seeing with this like scanning activity, and they were actually detecting it with Bro using some scan scripts that they run there. And uh, he started asking around, and they started digging into it, and they pulled these devices that it was on, and they they really did this whole. Uh, you know, investigation of this thing, and they actually called it the alien worm. And they, there's, there's a, uh, it's not public, but there is a write-up internally there. And uh, they weren't really sure what it was until that day suddenly when there was that public announcement where some anonymous person had uh, done the, the great internet scan thing where they compromised all those webcams and everything and scanned yeah, we talked the about it before internet. We talked about it on the show. Yeah, so it was interesting, though, because they actually caught that very quickly, and they started responding to all the devices on their network that were getting compromised. And it, it was just interesting because it got popping up very clearly with the way they run Bro and what they do with it. So, Yeah, out, of, out at the, the lab, they're, they, they're running some of the more advanced Bro features that are, you know, right now uh, not as polished as, you know, things like the uh, input framework and some of the things that are in the base packages. So these are things that you need to go in and configure yourself in Bro. But they're using active response to help dynamically manage their routers and firewalls. So if they detect heuristically, you know, uh, scanning behavior or certain types of activities, they'll do like a catch and release, and they'll ban you for a certain period of time. And then Bro will release the user, and if, then if they see that user again, they will ban them again. So this has given them some advanced notice of some of the major worms in the last couple of years. Uh, Mordo lit up their um, sensors uh, 30 days before it was announced, you know, publicly, um, and uh, the big MySQL worm. Now they didn't know what the zero day was in MySQL, but on their side, they saw this tremendous increase in scanning on 3389, which is why when that whole Karna botnet came out. Uh, they were baffled at first, and uh, the more research they did, it was actually, you know, a, a very interesting case because um, uh, the in the internal write-up, um, they actually had identified a couple different brands of Chinese cameras, and these IP video cameras were very inexpensive, and then they traced them back to an OEM camera, and there was even some sort of 
you know, cursory discussion of what sort of a threat is this really? Is this, you know, if, if all of these cameras are out of one place, are they coming by default configured with the sleeper botnet? Uh, and more research, then they started to detect, you know, some of the, um, the, the worm behavior where it's, in, you know, detecting new devices and then infecting them. Uh, but uh, they, they did an incredible job researching that and writing that up. They had it absolutely pegged. When, uh, when the website came up for the Karna botnet, the internet scan of 2012, I mean, it matched verbatim. Uh, in a video that will be released shortly, you can see Ashish, you know, actually project the size of the botnet, and he, he hit it right on the head. Uh, they had gotten some supercomputer time, and they did some amazing graphics and, you know, these, these wonderful 3D representations of what it looked like, ASN analysis, and, uh, and so forth. So it was a really sophisticated uh, catch That's that was really, really cool. only possible with the Bro platform. Awesome. Uh, so why don't you guys take us through a little uh, demonstration and installation? Uh, so um, up on the blog, um, I went ahead and uh, put a link out to some files I've got up on GitHub. And um, what I did is I trolled the uh, uh, Mila's uh, Contagio uh, dump, uh, that wonderful release where she just put out all of those uh, PCAPs. And I went ahead and selected a set and, and downloaded them. And um, uh, these, these PCAPs are great. I use these in, in a lot of the bro training I do. Let me just pull up your blog here. Hold on just a second. So I'm actually looking at it on screen. Hmm. What's okay, so so what I did is I, I pulled out a lot of the the common malware patterns that you see, you know, when you're running a large network. So these are things like, you know, black hole exploit kit, uh, kit to a uh, Java exploit, or um, uh, there's this uh, MS uh, uh, Yabi one here that that I actually did a walkthrough on on the blog. So Bro can run in two modes. You can it's designed to be installed, you know, at the gateway or, you know, internally in your network to give you some, uh, you know, kind of deep insight into your network. Uh, and it can run in real time. But you can also use Bro offline to analyze PCAPs. So if you go to the paul.com blog and you go to the wiki and pull up episode 336, there's a quick little walkthrough here of what it looks like to analyze this uh, MS uh, uh, Wab Yahi. I'm sure I'm butchering that, that file in Bro. So you call bro from the command line with dash r, uh, the, the pcap, and then a configuration file if you'd like. So that would be what that little local tag is at the end there. And then bro will go through and analyze the pcap, and it'll do three things for you. It'll write very detailed protocol logs for every protocol it has an analyzer for. It will do some heuristic, some kind of like greater analysis kind of stuff, and put those into things like a notice log or a weird log or a capture loss log to give you some sort of meta statistics about what's going on. And then it's a programming language. So it can take actions. Uh, in my GitHub, I've got examples of making bro tweet. Um, we've talked about you know, pivoting out to the Team Kamri Mar hash registry. You can write notices, alerts. We have Python bindings. So you can really, if you're not comfortable programming in bro, you can hook bro from an outside language and then take whatever actor action you want. So in this example, I thought it was I thought it was a great walkthrough, and I, I try to approach PCAPs in a in a in a standard methodology. So sort of like the OODA loop, you know, the first thing you want to do is you know observe and orient yourself. So the first thing I do is I check the capture loss.log because I want to know is this a clean PCAP, and then I'll start with my greater you know heuristic logs. So I'll look at the notice log and I'll say, is Bro saying that that there's something going on here? An example might be in in an SSH log you would see failed log on, 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 successful log on, you know, a pattern like that. In the notice log, you would see a greater heuristic applied to those, those underlying details. You might see something like H or SSH enforcer heuristically detected. So those would be the kind of things that you would think about, like a higher order alert, as opposed to just bullet points. Uh, the new scan.bro and bro22 gives you something amazing too. You can see the scanning activity in lower level um, protocol. Uh, logs, but then you get this greater analysis to say that that this host scanned a certain number of uh, hosts uh, on F, you know, over FTP in this time period. So so once I've looked at a PCAP and I've checked you know the sort of meta logs, then I'll start at the bottom of the TCP/IP stack. Uh, if there were tunneled traffic, I may start with the Torito log so I can kind of understand how many tunnel, hosts. The tunnel, the tunnel, the uh, tunnel log. I'm sorry, yeah, the tunnel log. Thank you, Seth. 
I would start by looking at the tunnel log and, uh, you know, basically orient myself in saying, is there, you know, IPv6 tunneled on IPv4? Is there um, IEA or whatever whatever type type of tunnel traffic for us on the network? Then I would start. At, then I would go to the con log, and this is like a traditional flow record, except it has the advantage of also having heuristically detected um, uh, protocols uh, uh, services. So what that means is that if we when we see traffic on say port 53, the first analyzer that we'll try to attach will be the DNS analyzer, and if that doesn't attach. We test out our other analyzers, and this is a great way to detect some of this malware that does funky things on funky ports. In this in this example I did on the walkthrough, the DNS traffic is normal on a normal port, but then there's actually HTTP spoken on port 443, where you would typically see bro tag that out as SSL traffic. So right away, just starting at this kind of uh, heuristically detected flow uh, record here, I know that there's a problem. I, I, I see that already. So I look at the DNS, the DNS looks okay, and then I go right to the HTTP log. And this isn't just the HTTP that was on port 80, this is all the HTTP. So I can immediately see that there's something that this, that this host is doing. Uh, the real bang though is that um, Bro detects that there's a valid HTTP communication between this um, compromised uh, host uh, and a remote responder. Uh, and then it actually detects heuristically a, um, a shell that's being tunneled uh, in that HTTP traffic. So that was a nice short little example. These logs are not very long if you replay this PCAP yourself. Um, but it gives you the ability to, you know, really see sort of the, the, the heuristic power of Bro. But I will say that on a 10 gig of, on a network that's actually doing 10 gigabits of traffic, they are very, very long. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah, they, the, you know, mm. uh, Bro itself is, you know, dealing in, um, you know, managing your Bro install is is one thing, and then there's also the separate thing of how do I index and manage these sometimes massive logs. And Bro um, includes by default an Elasticsearch writer. Security Onion uh, comes configured with Bro pointing right at Martin Holstey's uh, Elsa, which is a Sphinx on top of MySQL. Uh, and then uh, there's a lot of our big sites are actually just pointing Bro right at Splunk. And then they're using the power of Splunk to kind of do those, you know, MapReduce operations where you say, you know, show me all of the remote hosts that were speaking SSL grouped by the outbound port number. Um, and, and, you know, those would, things, things like, you know, uh, speaking SSL on, you know, port 80 or port 53 really stand out when you start to do those group buys. Uh, so, uh, Liam, said, is there a, a central repository for you to download scripts, or is it basically searching through GitHub, or what's the... the um, that's that? actually something that has been on our to-do list for a while, and we've had a hard time getting someone tasked to it, just because we've had a lot of other stuff going on, but that is something that we're honestly hoping to get done before long where it would be something akin to like cpan or ruby gems yeah, or yeah. the python pip gotcha in yeah. a, in the default in the default git repo paul we basically have the whole the whole system divided Ooh. into into two videos and i've got a, a good walkthrough of this um in a video called file extraction in bro and it's actually linked off the blog there um, and it walks you through the kind of directory layout. And we have a base directory, which is everything that's enabled by default. And this is sort of like the things that make bro bro. Um, the, the, you know, some of the underlying built-in functions are, are, are you know, instantiated there and so forth. And then we have a policy directory, which is just full of all of this um, script gold. Uh, and in the policy directory, you need to go in and enable these things yourself because they could have, you know, like a computational or performance impact on your sensor, yeah, or so I'm sorry, some additional, interrupt, but is, you know, that, is there a way that you could, like, how hard is it to write a script that would just totally crush the performance of Bro? <laughs> oh, I mean, you could you could DOS easy. Bro pretty easy. Yeah, you know, easy yeah. and not easy. <laughs> you know, but, but it just it just depends. It depends on what you're doing, and it depends on what your network traffic is like. So sometimes it's a little hard to measure. And one of the things that uh, that we keep discovering internally is that even as the ones writing the whole system, we never are very sure about what's going to cause performance problems in the core or in the script land. Mm -hmm. Well, but the whole idea with Paul or with a uh, bro Paul is that it scales, it scales laterally. 
So when you need more bro, you, you configure more you know, commodity x86 servers, and you plug them into your network, and bro can scale horizontally across processes. You're not just limited by how many resources I can stuff into a single system. It's not, you know, we can max out, you know, if you've got a, a box with 64 CPUs, if you've got a box with 64 CPUs and 128 gigabit, you know, gigabytes of memory on it, uh, you can you can spin bro up uh, to some amazing speeds on that. You can also use, um, you know, Dell R710s that you've got, you know, a rack full of them. And and when we talk about the platform, that's where bro already includes all those cluster safe frameworks and libraries that let you scale bro horizontally. So if you want to write scripts that are more computationally intense, then you simply you need more bro. You plug in more bro boxes. Mm. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, how far have you made it through your uh, technical segment here that you have in the show notes, Liam? Uh, I I think we we went through uh, uh, it well enough. I mean, it, it's it's you know somewhat difficult to walk people through command line, you know, sort of stuff. I I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? From what I've heard, that quick start guide has gotten mo many people pretty much the whole way there. And if anyone has trouble, they just install Security Onion and they're done with it. Yeah, so. I was going to say, so it, um, so Bro is included on the Security Onion. We had Doug Burks on the show uh, a while back. Yeah, yeah, it, it's included the base Bro 2.1. Um, and what we're trying to do with the videos when we put them out there are we're, we're walking people through security I mean, because we look at that as sort of our, you know, what is the, the long tail of the bro installs, the people that are sophisticated enough to install FreeBSD and configure it and, you know, in a specialized uh, manner, they can take a video that was designed for a security engine user and adapt those, you know, those commands to their install directories and things like that. So we're really trying to make sure that when we release things into the community that we address the whole community because it's a it's a really, really big tent and we want to make sure that, you know, Bro is free. It's it's BSD licensed. Uh, we want to encourage people to experiment and build things in Bro. Mm. And break Bro. Yeah. <laughs> and tell only, you about that's the only reason. And then disclose it bro. to you though, right? There's an important point to make, right? Not just break it and not tell yeah. you. Well, yeah, exactly. Break it and tell us how it broke. <laughs> uh, so you guys I would have not some. Know bro, <laughs> if I hadn't done that. <laughs> so you guys have some uh, references at the end, including including um, Broala, which is the new Bro Core consulting company. Yeah. So Broala was really, um, you know, we kind of felt that uh, one of the things that kind of holds Bro back is is that. Big companies uh, sometimes don't want to make an investment in it unless they know they can buy a support contract. Um, we also have this incredible opportunity where under our current NSF funding, you know, we don't have the ability to do pay-for-play work. So we have major corporations that want things like, um, like an SMB analyzer. And when you want to talk about the most exciting thing to happen in security in a long time, when we get that SMB analyzer into Bro, regardless of who funds it, it is going to be amazing. It's going to unlock so many new heuristics and ways to detect, you know, the real APT crews. Because regardless of how they get in, once they're in, they're as noisy as elephants in a china shop. You know, when they start pivoting laterally and start doing scanning internally, there just is not a good way now to apply even simple metrics, you know, to, you know, from a passive point of view. So you include all of the things speaking IP, not just all of the window boxes in this domain, from a passive uh, a sensor to, you know, count all the things, to count the number of, you know, scan requests or to look at, you know, to simply compare the domain. So we think that, that the, when, we're, when we're spinning up this consulting company, all of our initial discussions are around either how do we assist you deploy Bro in a major way through support contracts, you know, high-end consulting services, things like that. And how do we start the conversation about funding the development of frameworks and analyzers that you're desperate for that we can release back into that platform? That's a real, uh, a real big concern for us. We had a bunch of venture capital offers, but we've decided to bootstrap this thing because we, w we, are, we are absolutely dedicated to the platform and the community. Uh, awesome. I like the uh, the little logo for Broala. It's like a koala, but it's Bro Broala, and you're Bro Evangelist, which I think is awesome. Uh, that's great. 
Guys, thank you very much for appearing on Paul.com, telling us all about Bro. There's some more uh, in-depth technical information and some of the quick start guides that Liam and Seth mentioned are in there. Encourage everyone to go out and check out Bro and uh, run it in your environment and write scripts and. Uh, and one f one yeah. final thing, if you don't mind. Yes, and send Seth lots of money, women, and well, be no, a no, cherries no, 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 no. and vodka. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Go to vlog.bro.org and check out the uh, Bro Exchange we have coming up in August in Illinois at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. Um, we're looking for people to talk about how they've used Bro or broke Bro or anything, and uh, we have lots of room for people to. Sign up still, and it costs fifty dollars. So I'm sort of looking for the opposite of money, and that includes seven or eight meals or something for fifty bucks. It's hard to beat that. Yeah, uh, thanks to the generous funding from the National Science Foundation, the award number is happily listed on the Paul.com blog. They are wonderful, and they are really they really believe in um, uh, you know the mission and the sort of cutting edge research that's being done in Bro. And, and what was the the website? blog.bro.org yeah if you just go to bro.org you'll see it listed over there on the right oh okay well yeah. I, I guys I have to tell you I really other than having a bromance with Jack and Larry and, and John I, I have a bromance with bro so thank <laughs> you very much for coming on paul.com thanks, thanks again for, us, for the the cherry flavored vodka which is awesome <laughs> I encourage Enjoy. everyone to eat one of my cherries uh, you may have yes. one Yes. You have more than one? That's unnatural. Cheer, cheers to that. Thank you very much, cheers. guys. We'll Thanks, be right guys. back with our next Thank segment you. if I'm still conscious. If we can make it to our next segment. How many couches do you have, Paul? Yeah. Because you're sleeping on one. <laughs> it's good stuff. Thanks, guys. That was a great segment. Hey, thanks. thanks. I, I know we were.